there and welcome to this review of the One Way UK Daily Devotionals for the week 31st of October through to the 4th of November. And we shall be going through the passage John chapter 11 verses 37 to 46. It's the story of Lazarus. First of all though, I must thank all of you who came up to me and shared your experience of the Daily Devotional uh, with me uh, when we were at Derby and at Reading at the European Puppet Ministry Festivals. Um, I'm really very grateful because it's a tremendous encouragement uh, to me to actually know there's somebody uh, on the end uh, reading the devotional and that you found it a blessing. So thank you for that. It's, it's, uh, it was really very, very encouraging. On Monday of this week, we looked at progressive steps of faith. And um, and usually I actually just want to read um, what was in the devotional at that time. Um, we were talking, uh, uh, we were reading that uh, some of the people said, could not this man, that is Jesus, who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Now, that's an illustration of progressive faith. Um, you see, it goes like this. If Jesus can heal this person's cold, then maybe he could heal a more serious condition. Therefore, we could believe um, he can make the lame man walk. And because we see the lame man walk, then it may be possible for Jesus to heal the blind or the deaf. And seeing the deaf and the blind healed, we take the next logical step and we decide to believe that Jesus can heal terminal diseases. In other words, if Jesus can take away a cold, heal the cold, he can do the same with cancer. And that's the key to faith. Our taking a decision to believe that what we read about Jesus is true. Faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. It's how the New Living Translation puts it in Hebrews 11.1. 1. On Tuesday, we found out that sometimes God gives us difficult commands. He was saying, take away the stone. And Martha um, rushed forward and said, well, look, uh, the body's been uh, f dead for four days. It's going to stink. There's going to be a stench. It's going to stink. And um, uh, But, you know, the Bible's full of uh, difficult commands that God can give people. In Isaiah 20, it tells us that God had asked Isaiah, uh, to walk naked and barefoot for three years uh, just to make a point um, well such events as that and indeed asking uh, people to roll away the the stone from a grave of somebody been dead for all days they are great tests of obedience and following the command itself becomes an act of faith uh, but Paul reminds us that the foolishness of God is wiser than men um, when it comes to this wonderful moment when Jesus cries out with a loud voice um, saying, Lazarus, come forth, I have to say that um, the best that I've found some people make of that passage is the terrible joke that Lazarus never won a race because he only came forth. But you see, it's staggering to think of what Jesus um, accomplished in that one act because the raising of Lazarus would benefit Lazarus obviously it would comfort his sisters it would authenticate for the umpteenth time Jesus ministry um, it would provide an opportunity for the onlookers to believe in him and it gave John uh, authentic miracle copy that he could include in his gospel so that you and I could come to believe in Jesus. That is multitasking in the grand manner. That was on Wednesday. On Thursday, well, it was a very interesting situation because Lazarus comes out, um, but he's bound hand and foot with grave clothes and his face is wrapped in a cloth. And Jesus said to them, loose him and let him go. Uh, he needed help. Lazarus needed help. Um, even though he was 
brought back to life. And so it is with those who are born again. And you know, it, it isn't good enough to simply bring people to Christ and then say, well, uh, well done, that's the best decision you've ever made. Now get on with it. You see, the Holy Spirit is, is there, but he has a function. He has a job, just as you and I have a job and a function uh, in the operation of God's church on earth. Um, and to give total dependence upon the Holy Spirit just to see somebody through is not actually what the Bible teaches. It sounds fine spiritual, but it's not what we should be doing. You know, a second approach is goes in the opposite direction. Is interventionist and the person is told straight away what behaviour is unacceptable and so on and so forth. And whilst we know some behaviour is unhelpful or wrong, it doesn't help anybody to have a net of legalism put drawn ever tighter around them. It's just as if um, the, the freedom we talk of in Jesus is a farce because no sooner has somebody said, yes, I'm going to follow Jesus, than we entangle them in a snare and, and their second condition is as bad as their first. Um, you know, the whole thing of making disciples, which is our job, that's what the Bible says, that's what Jesus said. He said, you go and make disciples. He didn't say the Holy Spirit is going to make disciples and you can make them a cup of tea. He said, no, you go and make disciples. And it begins by making friends, winning people's trust and standing by them when they make mistakes or do wrong. That's unconditional love. That's what Jesus does for you and me. And that's what he asks us to do for others. Uh, finally, we come to Friday. And, um, well, what did people make of this miracle, this wonderful miracle of Jesus, of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead? Well, you know, even in the face of that miracle, some of them went off to tell the Pharisees what Jesus had been up to. And you know, the same phenomenon can go on today, and it does go on today. Whenever people hear a preacher that they don't take to, they don't like, they don't agree with, then they run off and tell somebody about what the preacher did or said. But what should we do when we're faced with something which we've heard or we've seen with which we disagree or frankly don't understand. Well, you know, we could be totally revolutionary about this and we could actually ask God about it. God will know the truth and if he wants us to know the truth on that particular matter, then uh, he, he'll tell us. And if he's silent on the matter, then that's an indication of how we should deal with it too. Just remain silent. You know, that way, we'll never find ourselves guilty of spreading gossip, gossip or getting it wrong. Well, I hope you have a great weekend. Um, my neighbours told me that uh, the weather forecast is not good, but hey, there's more to life than sunshine. And, um, and Jesus is the way to find it. God bless you, and I'll see you next week. How deep is his love, how